Let us continue with the new covenant of the heart, the next prophecy. This is another powerful prophecy that Jesus fulfills. In Jeremiah 31, it says, A new covenant. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, where I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. The days are here. The new covenant has been made. In verse 32, it says, Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took with them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I, though I was their husband, says the Lord. The old covenant is in the Old Testament. Then it says in verse 33, but this, is the, but this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will pour my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The new covenant is in the New Testament. It's within them. Uh, what is within them? It's upon their hearts. That new covenant is nothing other than love. This is very true. No one loved more than Jesus. No one practiced, preached, and exemplified love more than Jesus. Jesus is synonymous with love. This is no coincidence. Jesus really did deliver us God's new covenant. This is hard to deny. That covenant within our hearts. That love. Then it says in verse 34 on the next page, And no longer shall each man in his shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother saying I know the Lord for shall for for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord for I will give their in, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more a new covenant built on faith and sacrifice and love spiritual in the soul upon their hearts this is a powerful affirmation of Jesus as the Christ so what is this love that Jesus preached? How do you define Christian love? Christian love, does Jesus mean romantic love? No, there are different forms of love. The ancient Greeks identified four forms of love within human relations. The four loves, one, there's storge love. Storge love is family love, family love. Philia is friendship love. Eros. Eros is romantic love. Agape. Agape is selfless, self-sacrificial love. Agape. That is Christian love. Agape is a Greek, a Greek word that represents Christian love. Before Jesus, the term agape was rarely used because it was so general. The other forms of love, storche, philia, and eros, more clear, are more specific and express more clearly what one wanted to say about the different forms of love. Christians adopted the general term agape and revolutionized it to indicate Jesus and Christians' unique love. After Jesus, when people heard the term agape, they understood it to mean Christian love. Let us define Christian love. Let me explain what is Christian love. In 1 John 3.16, agape love is defined. The author says this, by this we know love, meaning agape, that he, Jesus, laid down his life for us. I'll repeat that. By this we know love, meaning agape, that he, meaning Jesus, laid down his life for us. This is selfless, self-sacrificial love. This agape love that, Je that Jesus had for us by dying on the cross is why I'm a Christian. This selfless, self-sacrificial love, this agape love that Jesus had by dying on the cross for us is why I'm a Christian. I did not become a Christian for the reward of God's kingdom of heaven. I became a true Christian because of Jesus' selfless, self-sacrificial love for us by dying for us. He loved us so much. Jesus defines agape love because in his life and death he expresses its meaning in totality. In life, Jesus taught us how to have agape love. He taught us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. To love your neighbor as yourself. And in death, Jesus showed us how to have agape love as well. As I said in John 1, 3, 16, it says, By this we know love, that he, meaning Jesus, laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Jesus' message and death are the perfect expressions of agape love. Jesus tells us this, Greater love, agape, has no man than this 
that a man laid down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. When Jesus said this, he was speaking about himself. He knew he was going to die for us, his friends. Even on the cross, he, was, he has agape for those who are killing him. He cries out, Father, forgive them if they do not know what they do. He was killed like a guilty criminal, but the cross is a symbol of victory. Our reason and minds tell us that the way Jesus died is a curse and a disgrace. However, over two billion year, however, over two billion people wear the cross around their necks with love because Jesus was killed for us on the cross uh, because of his agape love for us. People wear the cross out of love. It's no longer disgrace. It's what it represents, that love, that sacrifice that Jesus had for us. Easter may be the most sublime and reverent day of the year because it's a day of hope and promise that, and that there's eternal life with God in heaven, and that one day our bodies will resurrect. However, we love Jesus, not for what he can give us, but because of his incomprehensible agape for us. His selfless, self-sacrificial death defines agape love, and he's worthy of adoration and adulation. The cross is a sign of victory because on it, Jesus completed his mission for our salvation. Not even death could stop Jesus from fulfilling his mission. In fact, death made it possible. In fact, death made it possible. Dying for us is why he came into the world. 